Howdy folks, Tech Texan here, bringing you Life is Feudal, and we are back to take care of a few things. Now that we've built our forge and anvil, we can do quite a bit more now, and this is kind of where the branch divides, the fork in the road hits, and this is when it's better to start divvying out responsibilities to different people, because there are multiple things that you're going to need in the future if you are willing to build a lovely village or town or a city, or however big you plan on making this, most likely a city, um, you're going to have to look to see who's going to be the town carpenter, town farmer, and probably the town blacksmith, because that alone is a full-time job, it takes a lot of management, but sometimes it works out if everyone shares blacksmith job. Uh, you're going to need someone to constantly mine for more resources, because the resources starts becoming... The resource requirement starts to be a little bit more specific. Like right now, a lot of the tools... Let's go ahead and go into our forge and anvil, and we'll start managing here. So I'm going to go to forge metal tools, and you'll see some of the requirements. So, for example, a shovel, you can use any common bar, any metal. However, down the road, some items will probably require just gold or just... Uh, uh, iron or whatever else so you're gonna have to keep these piles of metal separate so you're gonna have to keep an eye on that you'll need a carpenter to prepare other things such as a handle although that's sort of a low level uh, carpenter item but there are other things that need to be made and today we're gonna have to make ourselves uh, a carpenter's toolkit which requires handle and four common bars now I've already went ahead and went ahead of time and melted down some of the uh, metal bars but I need a handle so in order to make a handle or even craft anything requiring a carpenter skill uh, you're gonna need softwood billets now softwood billets is cutting down apple trees mulberry trees and I think there's a couple of more out there that are softwood uh, I recommend you know of course not chopping down your uh, farming apple trees that are high quality that you're using specifically for the town food source however if you continuing uh, pulling sprouts out and then growing it all over the place you'll have plenty left over to cut down and just use them into softwood billets and you can use them in high quality in fact I kinda got a head start on planting a bunch of high quality uh, apple trees that I found sprouts for so with that said in order to use your softwood billets and to uh, and your knife, of course, to make your handles, it's simple as right-clicking on your knife. Just like right-clicking on the pickaxe to uh, uh, create the uh, uh, construction stuff. So let's go to craft. And here we're just going to craft one handle. That's all we need for our carpenter's toolkit. And that's it. Now, of course, he's going to attempt to do another one as an auto-craft feature, but we're not going to do that. All right, let's go ahead and turn this sucker on. Now you always want to keep fuel in your forge so you can turn it on and off. But you don't need to heat it up with the bellows in order to do forging. Forging does not require you to heat the sucker up. Just keep it at low temperature. All it needs to be done is turn it on. Now it does use up fuel, but you'll find plenty in no time. Alright, let's go ahead and forge some metal tools. And you'll also notice there was a forge weapons, and we'll get into that later. I'm thinking uh, in a later video we'll get into forging weapons and we'll definitely need to get into hunting for our uh, items. Oh, I need four handles. Well, I guess we can't do this just yet. So I guess you're just going to have to endure watching me run over here and cut down some low quality mulberry trees, getting some softwood billets. Let's see, what quality is this guy? Come on. Nine. Yeah, that's pretty crappy. Time to cut this sucker down. Now, some low-quality trees, you're not going to be able to even get much more than one billet out of it. But we'll attempt, and I'm going to go ahead and uproot this sucker. Now, I am invoking GM rights to kind of help speed up my process of getting materials prepared ahead of time for you uh, for these tutorial videos. So, don't think I'm spending too much time on everything, but it still takes time to kind of get things sorted out. Alright, so we're going to saw out a billet, if we even get one from a, that low of a quality tree. 
Oh, good. We might even be able to get two. Let's see. Either that or tell us we failed. No, nah, we couldn't even get two. Oh, we did get two. All right. Awesome. That's all we got out of that one, however. All right. Let's find another low-quality one. This one looks pretty shabby. Mulberry tree. I always inspect the tree. Even if it looks bad, sometimes it can fool me. Yeah, that's that's pretty crappy. Cut that sucker down. We don't want that around here. We need to make room for the high quality trees. And let's get a head start in uprooting these trunks here. These stumps, excuse me. Because these stumps, they get in the way of, you know, planting more trees. Gotta get better ones out here. In fact, I got a bunch of oak sprouts that I'm ready and looking forward to growing. Now, oak trees are really, really good for your hardwood billets and boards. Alright, looks like it's only going to give us three, but that's okay because we only need three. We only need three more handles, so a total of four handles. So let's go to our craft on our knife, and let's start crafting through here. Now, if you make a metal knife, you will actually have more options in your crafting menu, and we can actually start making bows. So we're not far from getting our weapons. In fact, we already can make weapons. There's one weapon that you can make uh, early in the game, and that is a uh, sling. Now, I didn't bother with the sling because, honestly, it's poor quality, but we're going to have to make a sling in order to level up our... Uh, our uh, come on, combat. There we go. We have to level up our throwing weaponry, and we got to level up our throwing weaponry if we want to get into crossbows and bows mastery. So... You kind of need your sling for that, at least. Alright, let's go ahead and turn this sucker back on. Forge our metal tools, and let's make our carpenter's toolkit and craft. And I got ten bars in my inventory. We're going to be using four of them. And that's it. That's all I can make. Just one carpenter's toolkit, but hey, that's all I need. No, don't recycle. Alright, so now if I right click on my carpenter's toolkit, I get a lot more options. I can make a shield, some weapon, <laughs> I can make this sucker right here. Now you'll notice this takes linen rope. Rope is going to be a whole other video. We can make a fishing pole, although we already had the ability to do this. Uh, you can see we can make some shields, a nice kite shield. Uh, it only requires metal bands, hardwood boards, and nails, which we can already make with our forge and anvil. So, if you're up for it, go ahead and make your kite shield. You're going to be using them later. However, here's the problem with making it. That is, you need to level up in order to use it. Uh, let's see, where's our shields? Da -da 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 -da. Shield mastery. Let's see. Hmm, I don't think there's a requirement as to when you can first start using a shield, but there might be a requirement for some special shield. So you probably want to start simple with just a buckler. All right, then you have your practice swords. Now this is where things get fun. With your practice swords, you can hit your friends and do very, very low damage. You can also work on improving your healing skills if you become a healer. And... Uh, you know, it's good to level up your sword skills by just practicing in town. Plus, by using practice swords, you don't become a criminal in town. If you use your actual sword, then it could be a problem. And, of course, primitive shield to kind of help protect a little bit. But you do get hurt, so don't think you're going to be invulnerable. And, of course, window module and a few other things. The wheel is going to be very important, and here's why. We are going to need the wheel if we want to help improve our farming by making a plow. So here I kind of got a head start on a plow. Unfortunately, we're still going to need rope. So we're going to have to do farming the old-fashioned way. And we're going to do that in the next video. Or I might start in this video a little bit and dab a little bit in the realm of farming. Okay, so I've already started creating a few other items. So we want to build a kiln as well. And I've already threw in some water, clay, and plant fiber by using my lovely GM 
uh, access so you know it helps to be a server administrator and just throw that crap in and not work for it when I'm by myself now when you got your town helping out it ain't so bad either all right so I'm gonna go ahead and build this sucker and we got to do it again because it only puts so many resources in at one time I like how he does it in the quiet. Come on. Takes a while to make the kiln. Come on. It's all that clay you gotta put together. And really the kiln is like a glorified furnace. There it is. So here we can manage our kiln and you use it much like you do the furnace or the forge and anvil. Uh, the difference is you'll be dealing more with uh, clay objects and another beautiful thing of course is making charcoal. You can make charcoal in the kiln, uh, just throw in some hardwood billets, cook it for a while and you can definitely make some charcoal. And what's nice about charcoal is charcoal becomes a more efficient way of making your tools and weapons in the forge and anvil. So there you have that. And, oh, spinning wheel. I was just messing with that. Okay, the other item is a barrel. Now, you'll notice that the bark baskets become a little annoying and that you can't put much in them. So I decided to go ahead and get started constructing uh, the barrel. And, of course, this requires five softwood boards. Now, pay attention to that. Softwood boards. You cannot get this from hardwood uh, logs. So make sure you get softwood. Uh, and, of course, 20 nails from the forge and anvil. And metal bands from the forge and anvil. Let's go ahead and build this sucker. And he'll just use a saw. Why not? And there we have a barrel. We get a little bit more room, wiggle room, to put things in here. Take note, I could put my pickaxe in there. Unfortunately, it's too small for my fishing pole, so I still don't have a place for the fishing pole. But fear not. We'll get into doing that a little bit more later when I start constructing the larger furniture such as the wardrobe. Where's my wardrobe? It is under... Oh, no, it's not under here. Where are you? Oh, what am I thinking? It's another carpentry feature. So you right click on the ground, go to carpentry, go to construct furniture. You got alchemist table, which really does essentially almost the same thing as the uh, mortar and pestle when using your when using your herbs to create uh, potions and things like that. But the alchemist table will have more features. Uh, bottle racks, carts, chairs, crates. You'll definitely want to get into that a little bit more. Uh, trader cart. You could drag a lot of stuff across long distances. Of course, carrying it by a human being is extremely slow, and you'll definitely want some horses tamed for that. Weapon rack, wardrobe. Wardrobe so far has been among the best uh, storage containers because with a wardrobe, you could fit all your armor, you could fit your swords. It supports all the uh, longer items, so you can definitely want to do that. And so wardrobe is probably the most efficient storage space there is in the game so far, uh, it, other than the warehouse, of course. The warehouse is really ultimately the best. So we'll get into the warehouse later. Now, just like anything else, you can uh, lift the object up and move it around. I intended to use the barrel next to my forge and anvil, so that way I could put supplies such as hardwood billets in there. Let's see. Let's go ahead and cut out a hardwood billet and slap it in there. Now I'm going to need to make some metal tools so I can work a little more efficiently, end up with higher quality items, and things will work out just a little better. Oh, why did I do that? Oh, there we go. I have a horrible habit of hitting the escape key as opposed to the tab key. There we go. 
So now I have a storage space for my billets and I have a lot more space for it because this holds 300 as opposed to the bark basket which holds, let's see, how many? And by 300 that's a stone weight. This only holds 50 so one barrel equals quite a few of these uh, bark boxes. So yeah, bark boxes you probably want to keep for smaller items such as the the, the herbs that you collect for your alchemy and things like that. All right, let's dab a little bit into the farming and we'll start off with the chicken coop. Now I didn't catch any chickens with my snare just yet, but I did lay out a few more snares. However, I did use my uh, GM power abilities as a server administrator to uh, automatically put some chickens into my coop. Unfortunately, they all have the same gender, so I don't think they're going to multiply. I don't know. We'll see. All right, so here we have uh, different qualities that I put in just to kind of mix it up a bit. Uh, there's a dungo meter. Now, the dungo meter is used to uh, obviously clean out the dung. All right, you got to clean the poop out, and that poop actually has a use. You put that poop in your inventory after you clean it out, and that's used to fertilize your farms. So you're going to want to do that frequently. However, that is also the best way to level up your animal lore. So go ahead and catch you some chickens or hares, uh, the rabbits, whatever you uh, plan on using in your chick in your coop. Put them in here and then clean it out every now and then. So that way you can... I almost forgot. i got to feed these guys. you got to put food in here for them to eat. So you got to give them food to eat. Clean the sucker out, that gets your animal lore up, and then they're good to go. Now, you can also clean it from here. You don't have to go to the manage screen every time. You can harvest and kill a chicken for its meat, but you usually want to wait till it gets to an older age where it's no longer producing eggs or anything of that nature. Uh, and if you do want eggs, you just harvest. Now, it shows my harvest amount is zero. I doubt I'm going to get anything right now because I just put these suckers in just a few minutes ago. So, we'll worry about that another day. Now, before you get your plow to prepare your fields, there's only one real way to prepare your fields. And I've already got a little spot here started, but you're going to have to... Ah, <sighs> plow, little at a time, with your shovel. Again, it's a really good idea to have a metal tool. And plowing takes a while. And I kind of have to go into a jagged form here to... I didn't choose the greatest field. It's too far away. This is probably the most boring part of the job. Make sure, guys, that you be nice to your farmers. If they quit on you, then your town is screwed, I can tell you right now. Your farmer is very vital of getting things done because there's a lot of items that require rope. The only way to obtain rope is to grow flax. You need to grow flax in order to make your, uh, your, your, your rope. So once you get your fields plow, you're thinking, well, okay, I got my fields plow. How do I know what I'm planting? Well, you actually got to go into different areas. Use your farming skills and gather wild plants. So you sit here for a while. Oh, I need a sickle in order to do that. Ah, uh, I gotta go get a sickle. I thought I already made one. I'm not really sure if I made one yet or not. Ah, yes, I made one. So in order to do your farming, you got to have things to farm with. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and gather wild plants. you got to have a sickle to do this. And with a forge and anvil, you can move up to a metal sickle. 
Now my farming increases, but I haven't found anything yet, so I don't have any seeds. Sometimes this just simply takes a while. You're just going to have to take your time with it. Now, farmers, for those of you who volunteer to farm, don't think that it's going to be entirely boring, because here's what's nice. You pretty much do the same thing daily, but if the town supports you, they're going to give you weapons, they're going to give you armor, and you can have all kinds of fun with them. All for just doing the same thing every day. But it's important to keep up with it, because you're for farming, it's on a time cycle. So if that server is running 24-7, and you're growing your plants, you gotta make sure that you jump into the game within at least every 24, let's see, I can't remember, 12 to 24 hours, it depends on the day cycle. But once you figure out that day cycle, you gotta make sure you're in at the same time every day. I'm pretty sure it's an actual 24 hours uh, for the best harvest. wonder if I need to go into forest soil to do this. I haven't found anything. Let's go into forest soil. Let's see what happens when I do this. Okay, there's some mix of forest soil and regular soil. Let me try to get out of that. I'm pretty sure you don't find it in the forest. I guess you could do it anywhere. I'm not really sure if your results will be much different from regular fertile soil and forced soil. Now, in the long run, my entire forest over here is going to look different. I'm going to be cutting down every low quality tree in the area because we don't even want to mess with them we want high quality trees and we want high quality trees to grow everywhere so that's going to be the ultimate goal as far as tree farming goes and i've pretty much already shown you what to do as far as tree farming just level up your skill by cutting down trees planting new ones just to make sure you get those sprouts before you cut them down if they're a higher quality tree and don't worry if you once you get in the game you wonder where are the high quality trees they're out there just gotta look around and many times you can visually tell just by looking at it whether it's a high quality or low quality in this game you have to take your time nothing is done fast well unless you do what I did cheat and use GM but I'm only doing that for the sake of the tutorial I'm not gonna be doing that on any server or definitely on MMO MMO, you got to take those individual skills seriously and focus on them. Again, I'm thinking of being the herbalist so I could sell that uh, flux. I'm thinking for me, flux will be my trade. I will give you flux for weapons, armor, and everything else. Why? Because it's such a pain in the butt to make flux. There's probably only one thing. Oh, good, I found an onion. All of that, I found an onion. But we need, we need flax seed. That's what we really need. About the only thing more difficult than making flux is shaping granite. Why? Because you got to run all the way to different mountainous areas where the granite exists. You got to use your pickaxe to shape it. Then you got to get it back. Hey, I found a potato. All right. Now, it doesn't seem bad at first, but after you spend so many hours on granite, you will understand why. And granite are used for a lot of the structures later on when you get into stone walls and even castle walls. Uh, the granite struggle is definitely real in this game. You will go through very, very many metal pickaxes just shaping granite. And the thing is, it's more efficient to shape the granite in the mines, then dig up more granite, then shape it, because you could squeeze more in your inventory, then use your prayer ability to teleport back home and drop it off, and then run back to the mountain. It is a struggle. 
Now, I am also going to work on getting my piety up by teleportation, and then once I level up to 30 by teleporting home every time, then I will use uh, the daily prayer to bring up my piety level. Now right now it doesn't seem to be much a, a reason for doing that other than if you do any criminal acts it can kind of help counterbalance that but it takes time to do that. But later on there will probably be other advantages to daily prayers. But it also makes me wonder if they're going to have counter abilities at being a criminal. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, I'm not really finding much of anything. All I found was onions, potatoes. We'll go ahead and plant it for the heck of it. I'll just use my GM rights later. Give myself some flaxseed and get started. Alright, so... I go ahead and right click on my plowed land and it gives me the option to fertilize. Now fertilizing is important because as you grow your plants and as you use your land and use that fertilized soil, eventually it becomes unfertilized soil and you can't grow anything on it. Then you have to fertilize it again with the dung that you get out of the coop. Uh, eventually when you get the stables, the horse poop also works just as well, if not better. And you can see I have multiple things that I can grow. Peas, wheat, onions, carrots, potatoes, grapes, cabbage. Of course, the big one that you got to do is flax. Get that flax growing because you're going to need that for all the rope. And that rope, there are so many items that require rope. In fact, the plow itself requires rope. Now, the nice thing about the plow is that allows you to... To plow your land a lot quicker. I'm not kidding. I mean, it rolls slowly, but you just drive over it and it plows. You don't have to sit at each square for any given number of time. You just drive over it. There are so many objects in carpentry, in building, and even, I'm not kidding, just simple things like the archery target it requires rope. So you're going to need this. Definitely get your farmers uh, ready and up and running as fast as possible and get them growing that flax. All right, I'm going to go ahead and plant this onion. Now I'll plant a potato. Potato's good. Good for a hearty meal. Now you'll notice the texture barely changed, but it actually did. Well, it's nighttime. It's kind of hard to tell. But you can barely see some of the plants that are in the ground, and it is actually growing. And notice I am not able to do anything else. I don't have a farming option. Nothing has grown. So I can't really do anything with it. But I could plant items over here. Now it gives me the option for planting, but I can also sow. Which is basically the same thing. All right. I believe that is all I'm going to show today. Again, we'll get a little bit more into farming later on. We're going to get a little bit more into constructing some of the larger objects. We're going to build some walls eventually, and of course, we're going to actually have some fun and do a little bit of hunting. That's what we really need to do. So, with that said, y'all come back now, you hear? Bye!